freue mich, einen unserer weiteren Schirmherren heute begrüßen zu können. Frederik de Klerk aus Südafrika, der nun zu uns sprechen wird. Herzlich willkommen, Mr. de Klerk. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as I am the first speaker, as one who did not organize this conference but who have been invited to attend, I'm sure that I speak on behalf of all of us. If we congratulate those who organized it, Mr. Moritz, the Peace University, and all of you who made this possible and who made our stay pleasant and who made sure that we worked constantly and did our duty and who helped us to conclude this conference so successfully to thank you all and I think we must give them all a very, very good applause. I have found this conference of great value. I have found it enriching. What has brought us together is a common commitment between all of us. A commitment to peace. A quest for peace. A sense of indignation about the many atrocities throughout the world and a commitment to make a contribution to make sure that the next century will be a better century will bring a better life across the globe will bring peace where at the moment conflict rages I think at the end of this conference, as a result of all the constructive discussions, I would like to identify three cornerstones of peace. The first is democracy. Real, vibrant, dynamic, multi-party democracy is a cornerstone of peace. Wherever it exists, there is a basic peace. No real multi-party dynamic democracy has declared war against another one. And therefore, I leave this conference with a fresh commitment to promote democracy. And those of us who are fortunate to live in such a democracy have a duty to uphold it and to continue to strengthen it and to ask ourselves what can we do to bring such real democracy to those who do not enjoy it. The second cornerstone is development. If we analyze all the areas of conflict we will find as one of the dark threads running through such conflicts a lack of development, poverty, destitution, illiteracy. And this conference has re-motivated all of us to say we must work for development, we must reach out to underdeveloped and developing countries. We must develop through better education the human resources so that the leaders can come forth to stand up for peace and to stand up for democracy in those societies. Because we cannot impose peace, we cannot impose democracy on others. We can empower people in a country or in a region through development, 
through economic development, through the creation of opportunities, hand in hand with education, to play their role and to find their peaceful destiny. And the third cornerstone is values. History has taught us what values form the basis and the cornerstone of peaceful societies. Values encapsulated in implementable rules, values supported by credible institutions and mechanisms which can, which can ensure the adherence to those values. Values such as the internationally acceptable system of basic human rights which have been developed especially during the last 50 years. Values such as tolerance without which there cannot be peace. Values such as justice for all because there cannot be peace in a society in which there is injustice. And we need to continue to focus on these values, to uphold them, to strengthen them, but also to identify the need for adding to them. And I believe the challenge of the next century is to also, as we have addressed and made a credo out of the concept of individual human rights, we, we are faced with a challenge to see and understand that the cause of many conflicts is the failure in societies to accommodate important minorities, to give them room and space within which they can breathe and live, is the failure to make them feel that I can still be what I am, an Afrikaner, a Zulu, a German, a Frenchman, a Latvian, but also be part of a greater whole. On these three cornerstones, democracy, development and values, we can build peace. We are faced with the challenge of addressing the areas where there is conflict, but equally demanding is the challenge to prevent conflicts from happening, to start soon enough to react to early warnings and to step into situations where peace is threatened. situations reigning in so many places. In the end, we will get nothing done unless each one of us, within our sphere of influence, mobilizes and activates civil society, politicians in power, use our influence, carry the message. Something can be done. Let's go out from here and do it. And, and may this peace university and this foundation which we are about to establish tonight, may it become one of the powerful mechanisms in our global quest for peace. I thank you.